Hello, welcome back. Last time I designed a puzzle, uh, and I'm gonna try and solve it today, but first I need to make some corrections. So I had a little bit, so as far as puzzle goes, this does work just fine. I already have it open here, but I actually have a definitional problem in my cross product formula. I was so focused on getting the operand order right, because it's a little bit complicated, that I actually, uh, I missed the operators themselves. These are supposed to be minuses. So yeah, makes a lot more sense that way. Y1 times Z2 minus Z1 times Y2, etc. Uh, so I need to update the Lua to verify that that way. And a vector cross vector, here we go. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. I use cross product all the time, but it's been a while since I actually implemented it. I just have the one implementation I wrote once, and then don't really look inside it very much. Uh, dot product is still correct, I believe. Okay, um, so if you want to solve this puzzle yourself, I will have posted it, a uh, link to it, in the description of this video. So if you'd like to give it a try before watching me do it, now is the time to do that. Uh, but now I'm going to do it. Okay. So, new design, uh, y1 times z2 minus z1 times y2, x1 times z2 minus z1, right. Uh, it's not as readable as possible, but it's, it's good enough. I have nothing in here to specifically say that these are given in x, y, z order, but I think that can be, that can be inferred just fine. So right, the output of these will have changed slightly in some way, I don't remember what they were before. Anyway, so uh, now to actually try solving this. So first of all, somebody needs to talk to the radio. Uh, just gonna make it one of these right away. So I can just, all right, here we go. Um, I've set this up in such a way that I can TCP uh, X01, I guess. So if it's negative 999, we'll go to the weight. Sure. Uh, so if it is dot product, let's see. So I guess I'd do like plus jump dot. Otherwise we're in the cross zone. All right, so if we're doing dot, then do that. Um, However, regardless, I think I will want to go ahead and read the two input vectors because for both, I get two inputs. Now, the thing is, like, what am I going to do with those? I might want to store them in a 100p14. That would kind of make some sense because uh, I think I do need to reaccess them a whole bunch of times. So basically, like, my two ideas here are to store the input vectors in a 100p14, then have somebody address those and read them and write the result as appropriate, then read the result from there and send it out here. That's probably a pretty straightforward way to do it. Alternatively, I think what I could do is read the values in turn, send them to a microcontroller, like maybe three microcontrollers. That'd have to be like six or three of these to have enough data space. Keep the X and Y in I don't know, I don't think I like that approach. That's too, I don't think I can just store those in registers and have it make sense. Because I would need too many registers to store essentially nine components. So two XYZs and a result vector or scalar in the case of dot product. Okay, so I think the most sensible is to store in one of these and then send out a message. Okay, so this is getting a little short on space. Yeah, all right, so that's a little bit of an issue. Okay. Uh, well, I, so I think unconditionally, unless we get a, something less than one, I want to just move, uh, let's see, which will be fewer instructions. This. So that's six instructions, obviously. Or... Ooh, if I'm doing a loop here, I would erase my jump dot. 
So it looks like I might actually just be doing that. That's icky. Uh, all right then. Okay, so plus jump dot. So we're here in cross. Uh, this would mean move. Okay, I don't know. Uh, no, this does work. Um, I think. Okay, so I move. Uh, I'm going to need an IO expander of some sort. I think. I wonder. What would happen if I did this? Well, the radio would complain about part connected to self. Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't just read from a wire and have it come from RX, then write to the wire and have it write to TX. No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> I would have done that long ago if that could have worked. Uh, so anyway, if I'm, uh, somebody else is going to have to manage the address line of this, by the way, which is fine. All right, yeah, so this gets the raw vector data in. Um, this will just assume the precondition is that pointer is wherever it needs to be, probably here. Uh, someone else. You can probably be a 4000x, I would suspect. Maybe, I don't know about that. Uh, but hang on, so I have line count problems here because I have to return a vector out there. No, I don't. Somebody else can. Ah, so that lets me... Okay, so if somebody else is actually returning the thing... Then you can just do the RX. Someone else can do the TX. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. I don't like this layout, though. Uh, actually, I think it's fine. I would do this. You would come out there. So X3 would be the... Uh... Yeah, okay. So you write the input vector, you have nothing to do with output, and you kick off the appropriate process for reading the values out of this, and then uh, that process will write it back out to TX. Sounds good to me. So, uh, right, so if we're on the cross product path, let's say dot product will have the easier time, but that'll be x3. I'll move a zero there. Perhaps that zero will reset the address to that. Uh, otherwise, I'll move a zero to x1. All right, so X1 will be my cross product processor. That'll do a lot more stuff. Uh, okay, great. Not wasting space there because the simple pin can just do that. Still don't know if I like this, but um, uh, one thing I don't like about that is that I have two separate things talking to the address line here, but actually that's fine. Anyway, um, so, but hang on. So where's the dot product processor? Uh, that one. Okay, right, so dot product definition. x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 plus c1 times z2. Sure. Uh, let's just try and write dot product since that's an easy one. Yeah, I don't like this layout one bit. I'll have to do something different. Um, why am I stretching everything out this way? So alternately, I could have this communicate to just one microcontroller. Yeah, maybe I like that better, actually. Whether it's dot product or cross product. Okay, so then let's just make this the same. So one for cross, two for dot. Both go to x1. You'll go ahead and just, uh, before you, s or no, after you sleep, um, Move zero to X3. Yeah, so when you're writing a new pair of vectors, this is one, two, three, four, five. I need six. Okay, well, that fits ugly. So I tell you uh, to write to the start of that, and then the others can index the um, those. That's fine. 
one, jump weight. Mm -hmm. X zero, X two. Um, does this compact better if I move it left? Yes. Quite a bit, in fact. There we go. Okay, I like that little crowded corner there. Uh, and then this can just connect to probably like that, I would suspect. You can do the output, maybe. Yeah, that's reasonable. Is it? Maybe. I don't know, that's already a couple of IO lines taken up and you need to be doing stuff down here eventually. Do you? No, you don't. Somebody you'll talk to, okay, yeah. So you'll essentially be another IO expander uh, to kick off a process like you'll do cross product, you'll do dot product, something, something. Both of these will be connected to D1 and probably A1. They'll return results here into whichever IO line they're connected to. Then you'll shuffle their results back into here. That seems like a good way to divide up this work, I think. So let's try it. So, uh, so wait for X1 to have a message on it. Uh, Okay, so you get a one or a two. Uh, so let's just tech x one one. So if one, it's a cross product. Otherwise, the dot. So if one moves something to x three, uh, otherwise moves something to x two, and actually. Right, and then you, okay, you may be able to become a MC4000X. I think this will be short enough. Let's find out. Uh, move zero, X2. Okay, so X2 is for dot product. X3 is for cross. So for dot product, it really is just one scalar result. So I just move that to X0. For this case, I do that three times because it's a vector result. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, so you turn into one of these. Great. All right, that looks sensible to me. Uh, so yeah, you expand IO and you, right, you don't need to manage this at all. You don't have the connections for it. And you uh, do the radio transmission stuff, sure. Okay, so let's do a dot product. That's the simple one. It still will take more than just one of those. Somewhere I'm going to need a multiply function, essentially. I think that's going to be you. So let's see if I can... Well, this isn't going to be particularly extensive, right? Let's see what this would look like. X0 is probably the wrong pin for that, but maybe not. Uh, oh, you need to be... Okay, so the problem is you need two registers for this, don't you? Uh, not add mole. X zero. Okay, so you'll give the two operands of a multiply operation, but then some complicated stuff needs to happen. Uh, I think you can do it all. Okay, so move ack, dat. So make a copy of that, because I'm going to destroy it now. Oh, you need yet another register, don't you? Because if I want to DGT... Oh boy. All right, yeah, so this multiply, this fixed point multiply is kind of a pain, isn't it? Because I can DGT2, but then where do I put the result of that? Because I need to copy dat back to ack, do the multiply, well, no, not do the multiply again, but get the other digits and combine the two together. If I had a swap command, it would work, because then I can destroy the value of dat after that. Uh, let's see, is there a way I can make this happen? 
Move that to Ack. Well, X zero. Move back to Dat. No, not without a swap. There isn't like any kind of XOR equivalent or something. Uh, oh boy, which window? This one. Add sub mull not to get this. Yeah, I kind of need three registers here, don't I? So maybe I need one thing to multiply and another thing to shift. Okay, here's what I can do. So with two microcontrollers here. Yeah, so this is kind of the core of the puzzle here, this multiply function. That's what makes everything kind of a pain, doesn't it? Uh, let's just see what this... Oh, the next one. See what it would look like if I were to do this. Uh, so this is a shift right. No, you need a, you need a dat for that. Ooh, big expensive thing for this. It's fine though. Again, it's the core of the puzzle. Uh, wait, but this has literally the same problem. Uh, so maybe this just needs to accumulate two values and then send them back after it's gotten two of them. That could work. Sure. That's fine. Okay. That's how I'm going to do it. So the one thing with the dat register here, SLX X0, move X0, ACK, mul X0, so that takes the two input numbers. So I have the results of a multiplication that needs to be shifted to the right by one. I'll copy to dat. Then I'll move dat to x3 or... Yeah, okay, so you just accumulate two numbers and put the result back in your line, right? Uh. Why do I keep writing x3? That's x1. Oh, because it's your x3, that's why. Uh, x0, actually. Yeah, so just add two numbers together and put them back. All right, so I dgt2, move ack, x3, and then I do it again the other way around, kinda. Move dat ack, dgt1. Oh wait, uh, after the, the DGT2, I need to mull 10. Yeah, I get the leftmost digit. Yeah, so I shift the leftmost digit right by two, then I shift it left by one by multiplying by 10. Uh, I put it in the accumulator. I get the second digit. Uh, by doing that, I shift it to the right. Um, yeah, this does handle two digit numbers sometimes. They're in range. Uh, and then this adds those together because I need this extra register to do that and brings uh, let's see, back x3. Then I can move x3 back out to x0. Okay, so this is my multiply function. I don't really like where it's positioned and also I probably want to change this to x1. That would work better. But let's see if I can work with this. Um, both of you need access to this, which is kind of a pain for crossing over, but maybe it's actually fine if, um... Okay, no, I'm making this annoying, huh? I guess I can do... Ugh. Oh, okay, so you're not using your X0. So your X3 is for A1. Your X1 is for D1. Oh, that can't escape. Well, it can if I do the... Uh... Ooh, okay. Wiring time always is something. Okay, so that right there, X1, good. So both of the X1s are the data line, and both of the X3s can totally be the that line, and both of the X2s can be the multiplier. Great, okay, I like that wiring. 
I think the cross product controller here is not going to have anywhere near enough operations. I might need a storage controller for addressing a certain uh, certain vector components. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of indirection and abstraction here just to to deal with the fact that I am essentially trying to work with nine registers at a time. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be nine registers at a time. I can write out the results component-wise to this. Yeah, so you can just calculate the X component of the cross product. So work with Y1, Z2, Z1, and Y2. So those four numbers, and then send it out here. I may actually, ooh, I might involve one of these here. Yeah, okay, this makes a lot of sense. So here I can encode the the manner in which cross product is done. So three times I would, yeah, so I'd start at zero, and then three times I would read the address in here of this, and then the next one, multiply those two together, do it twice more, multiply, let's see how many operands this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, hey, doesn't that fit nicely? Sure. Okay. I'm convinced this is a good idea right now. Uh, so indexes are Y1, 1, Z2, XYZ, XYZ, 5. And then that's Z1, 3, Y2, XYZ, XY. Okay, so that's 4. All right, one times five minus three times four. <laughs> oh boy, okay, this is fascinating. I like it. Yeah, this is great. Uh, you're not gonna have enough IO lines. All right, so you'll have to talk to a helper who actually talks to this, which means the lines to those are, oh boy. <laughs> it's getting messy. Okay, I do like that this puzzle did not turn out to be completely trivial. I hope it'll end up solvable. I gave all this space. I'm still not using any of that. That might change, it might not. This could probably sneak up there if it had to, to, to get some space for that. In fact, I should probably try and do that now. Yes, okay, that can very trivially move up there. Okay, so x0 is tx, x1 is rx, x3 and x2 are obvious. Uh, sure, okay, so this would be bridge here. This would be not Rx, they actually just that. Okay, so X3, X2. Yeah, okay, great. So that's much better. X2 goes down to this. Uh, how far left can things move? Since I have all the n requisite connections here, I'm fairly certain I can just, like, move into this space as much as I want, pretty much. Uh, there's no point in moving that there when I can put it here and be just as good, pretty much. Okay, so I have to... Oh, I have a P0 problem. This can only move left by one. Okay, so this was like that. So this can only move left by one because I can't have P0 overlapping with D1. Unless, no, there's just nothing, nothing really to do about that. All right, well, I can move everything left by one. That uh, gives me some wiring room, I guess, but no room for another controller or anything. All right, fine. That's just how it worked out. Okay, so. I think that's how that wiring works. And actually moving this stuff left doesn't really benefit me. It's a little tidier maybe. Okay, well, I freed some space that's impossible to use there. Uh, yeah, because of this P0, boy, you're kind of a super pain right there, huh? Yep. Unless I wanted to attempt this. That way that P0 overlaps with this P1. 
Okay, let's see how plausible that is. Okay, so x0 is this. That one fits just fine. Those are right next to each other. x1 is the d1. That one fits just fine. x3 has to bridge over to this, which I feel like might be a problem with the way that is. But it might not. x2 wants to be... What the heck is this x0? You don't use your x0. This is nothing. Okay, no, that's just the connection of A1 to X3. Okay, so X3 is A1. That should be fine. Yes, okay, so X3 is A1. X2 is D1. No, it's not. Well, it can be. It might have to be. Eh, it doesn't have to be. Previously, I had it as... Oh, you don't have any code in you. Uh... Okay, well, if A1 comes in here, X0 talks to X2, that's how that is. Right, yeah, it doesn't matter what your connections are because you have no code yet. Maybe I should make sure I can compact this, like I can fit dot product into here. Um, well, aren't you gonna have to talk to something already? Let's not compact yet, this is not the time for this. I need to know, I need to write some code first. Okay, yeah, I need to write some code first. All right, so um, let's finish encoding the cross product formula into this. So x1, that's 0, times z2, that's 5, I think, the last one. z2, yes, the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, minus z1, that's 3, times x2, that's 4. Right. No, that's three. Wait, why do I have a three here? X1 times Z2. X1 times Z2. Uh-huh, I agree with these. Minus Z1. Z1 is two, that's my problem. Times X2, three. Okay, great. Uh, X1, yeah, X1, zero again. Minus Y2, that's what, four? Yeah, one before the end, which is five. Uh, minus x2, that's three, times y1, that's one. Okay, great. So this has the operand order of cross product in it. So yeah, I would set this to zero, read the field at this address from here, multiply it with the field from the next address, Put that together and subtract from same operation on the next two, and then that's a component. Then repeat that twice more, and that's a cross product. Okay. Uh, I might end up with just a microcontroller that does what I just described there, and this is the one that controls that. Maybe. We'll see. See how it goes. What about dot product? That one's much simpler, and I might be able to just fit it in here without any extra help. Maybe. x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 plus z1 times z2. So interleaved layout here would be better if I could do it, but with the way I'm writing it and the order I've chosen for this, they don't get interleaved. But yeah, x1, x2, y1, y2, z1, z2 would be way more convenient for dot product and would not affect cross product if I'm addressing it this way. It would affect this data, but it wouldn't affect how this data is used. But there's no room here to write it in that order. I guess this could go to a helper who would change the order as it comes in. Is that worthwhile for dot product? Because otherwise, I'm going to end up wanting to do essentially another one of these for dot product. Okay, so I think that's an opportunity for cost optimization, basically. You could, instead of having a second one of these for dot product, Uh, before I do that, what would it look like to use one of these? Let's write this as if it is in interleaved order and see how that looks. Then I'll decide whether that looks like a good idea. Like maybe even that just won't even fit in here. Uh, so that would mean... 
Okay, right, so this is A1. Uh, I don't know what state you're in, so I'll probably want to uh, move X0 to... Well, yeah, that'll clear the I.O. line anyway, and I do like it. So X3 is A1 line. So we start at 0. Um, move X1, X2. Yes. Uh... Move x1, x2, so we're multiplying these two together, and then add x2. Right, so we add the pairwise multiplication together. Okay, and then we just do this twice more, and dot product is now in ack. Okay, uh, move ack x0, and that's a complete implementation of dot product if this is in the correct order. And seeing that it just doesn't affect cross product, it really makes me want to change the order. Okay, that's plausible. Uh, if I would move this up here, that would actually free up some space down here. This could move right. I could put a microcontroller in between that would reorder the parameters as they come in. That's not trivial. Uh, let's see. So basically what that would mean is when you get a message. Oh boy, what would that even mean? When you get a message, you would read an extra value out of this just to advance the pointer by one more. Then after that happens three times, you would do some address math on it? Are you using X3 anywhere? You are. You do reset it to zero. Hmm... Okay, uh, could I... I can't do address management here with, uh, oh, maybe with a for loop. Okay, let's try to do address management here so I can keep this simple. All right, so I'll just copy that over there. Um, I don't even need to, that's so simple. I can just reconstitute it if I need to. That's completely trivial. Okay, so let's wrap this in a loop that sets some indexes. And I don't actually need data for that because it's a consistent pattern. I can just encode the pattern in the loop itself. So that part is fine. I th Actually, I'll probably want to move x0 to ack because I'll use that for counting and stuff. Okay, so this this is the inner part of loop that happens three times, but first I need to operate on x3. Okay, so I move x0 to ack. Oh shoot, I'm using ack for other stuff. Uh, 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 okay, well that's inconvenient. Well, I mean, mm, ew, no. I don't have a swap command, so I can't be I can't be counting two things at once. Oh boy, yeah, that makes this more of a pain, doesn't it? Okay, I have a dat register that's going unused. Okay, now hang on, I think I can still work with this. Okay, so if I do this three times, and I'm okay with destroying ack for every loop through, which I think I might be, if I can just... Yeah, okay, this is still plausible because what I would do is I would use the address line to determine where I am and what I need to do. So I would... Yeah, okay, I do move x0 to x3, so I set the address to 0. Uh, this is the loop that does stuff. Move x1, x2, move x1, x2. No, 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 okay, so something different needs to happen in here. Uh, I also need to move 0 to dat at some point. 
I'll do it here. So clear it out after it's done. Uh, so yeah, right in here, this index needs to be... Oh, okay, so... Uh... Can do that to add two and only two lines of code. I think that's probably the quickest way to do it. Maybe. I'm not convinced. But maybe. Okay, so move x1, x2. Okay, so that's read the two numbers. So read that, skip that, skip that, read that. Pointer ends up here. I need to subtract three from it. Okay. Uh, move x3 ack sub 3 well yeah I see a lot of problems here that I need a conditional here to jump back to loop at some point. I'm not convinced I can't crunch that in here somehow, though. Okay. Move x0, ack. So that has to happen... Ah, uh, shoot, but that gets destroyed, doesn't it? Okay. X0, X3, X0... Uh, yeah, it does have to get reset to zero at some point. Okay, so move X0, X3. Move X1, X2, sure. Read a value there. Skip two values, read another value. So that part's fine. Now I have to go back by three. Well, so I feel like I could maybe crunch those two lines in here somehow, but I'm looking at this, and this looks a lot more compactable to me. Uh, first of all, I can definitely just save some lines in here by doing a, a loop there, right? Because um, I'm not using any registers here at all. Uh, move... Okay, so let's see. If I... Right, I can save an instruction like this. X... 0, x2. Uh, tech, ack, 0, sub 1, jump, loop. So loop there. Yeah, so first I will do this, then five additional times I will do the loop. Oh, but it was because of this. Ah, all right. Um, I think I can also save uh, a thing here by actually moving that to dat. I can cut down on the... Right, yeah, it wasn't because of registers. It was because of this instruction. Um, okay, so this is just tech dat... Negative nine nine nine. Uh, let's jump weight. So then unconditionally, I move my vector in there. And when I'm done, uh, yeah, okay. So there is the annoyance of still having to. That's fine, actually. Tech dat one. Oh wait, no, this all goes to, this all goes here. No, 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 I do actually just move that to x1. Nice. So that's cool. Uh, actually, I think this kind of works. So check this out. After I move an x0 to x2. Yeah, okay, so this is neat. I can make this work. After I move x0 to x2, I'm going to move x0 to null. No, not x0. I'm going to move uh, x2 to null. 
So just read once, so I skip one. So I write X, I skip, I write Y, I skip, I write Z. And then I can put another tech, tech X3. Okay, so I write zero, I skip one, I land on two. I write two, I skip three, I land on four. I write four, I skip five, I land on six. Uh, tech X3, six. So when I'm exactly at six, I move one, x3. Okay, so I think I write uh, the vectors interleaved now. That's cool, I like that. Yeah, so I skip back here, so that, you know, I write one, skip two, land on three. Write three, skip whatever, land on that. Oh, and also, by the way, I can, uh, I don't need to count at all here because I just know by the address, that's much better. Uh, so I don't need to move five to ACK. Um, so when I land on seven, right, because I skip one past, right, write one, skip two, land three. Write three, skip four, land five. Write five, skip six, land seven. Okay, uh, tech x3, six. So this becomes tech x3, seven keep looping. Great. Okay, that works so much better. Uh, yes, that works much better. Love it. Okay, great. So I've written interleaved vectors here, I believe. So that way I can simplify this a whole lot. I have to redo this table, which is completely fine. Uh, right, so that's next x0, uh, x0, x3. Move x1, x2, move x1, x2. This just works. Uh, yeah, and I can, since I already wrote a loop here, that's fine, I can keep it. Um, so ack is just that. Move zero, ack. Uh, move x1, x2, move x1, x2, add x2, great. So give it the two numbers, x1, x2. Uh, <laughs> oh man, that's a little confusing. Not the pins, the vector components. Y1, Y2, Z1, Z2. <laughs> Didn't think about those names until now. I just realized, oh dear, yeah, okay. So this is, uh, I should rephrase these. Eh, I'm not going to. I should. Oh, how would I rephrase it? Left dot y times right dot z or something. First dot y times second dot z. See, I need this few characters for it to fit on one line though. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it as it is. <laughs> Figure it out. These are not pins. These are, yeah, okay, it's not in bold. <laughs> pins are in bold. Uh, and there's, there's no real possibility of confusion there. It's just, anyway. So, uh, move x1, x2, add x2. Uh, tech x3, 6. Um, I don't need to do any address math at all. And then I move ack, x0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Check that out. Okay, that's nice. All right, yeah, so interleaving makes this so much better. Everything's great. I can change it to one of these now. Rewire. And there we go. That's real nice. What's X1 supposed to be connected to? Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, that. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. And I didn't need an extra microcontroller between these two to interleave. I was able to just do it here with a loop instead of using an unrolled one. Again, yeah. Roll up your loops. Makes your code smaller. It's better. Uh, takes a few more instructions, though. That's fine. Uh, all right. So I think all this is good. So now, cross product. I need to redo my cross product table. Uh, number substitution. Here, the easiest way to do that is with a second one of these. Just so I don't lose track of where I am. So zero remains zero. X1 didn't move. Uh, 
So this would have been Y1. So all ones turn into twos. Okay, and right, there's only going to be two of each number. Uh, zero remains zero. One becomes two. Two becomes four. Uh, so there's a two, that's a four. Where's the other two? There should be another two. Do I have an error in my data? Because there should be another two. I have three threes and only one two. I think this data was wrong as it was. Okay, so what's wrong here? Y1 times Z2 minus Z1 times Y2. I think this was supposed to have been a 2. Yeah, that's a Z1. Okay, so that 2 becomes a 4. All right, so those are my 4s. Mm, okay, so this data is suspect now. I may have made other errors like that, but... Well, okay, so let's do a quick check. Is there a pair of each numbers? There are two zeros. I can tell because it's in neither of those. Th those don't count. Here. This is nothing. So yeah, unused data unused data, sure. Uh, two ones, two zeros, uh, two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives. Okay, looks good, great. Uh, all threes become ones. Because three represents x2, and x2 is now here. Okay, all fours become threes? That seems right. Okay, so all fours become threes. And then all fives become... they stay fives, don't they? Yeah, zeros and fives stay the same, because it, it starts with x1 and ends with z2. Uh, so five becomes five. All right. Cool. Okay, so this is... oops, this is my actual data now. All right, so those are addresses for cross product. So now you are gonna need an address line on this, so I'm gonna need a storage helper. All right, so let's write cross products. Cross product will consist of... Yeah, that's fine, I can have a helper for that. That's no problem, really. Just a little expander in here that's gonna talk like that. I think. So basically I'll write the address. Okay, yeah, sure. So let's do this now. Uh, move zero, x3. Uh, yeah, you just do that four times and that's it. Yeah, so give me an address, then I'll give you the four of those. Of zero x three. Uh, okay, now I can't do this with ack. I'm gonna have maybe an unrolled loop here. Uh, so move zero x three. Move x three to the multiplication function. X two. Move x three. X two. Yeah, because you don't have a line to the address, so you can't test by that. That's kind of a pain. Oh, no, you don't. Could you have the line to the data? Possibly. Whoa. How'd this happen? This isn't right. I don't have a... Sp you have to have the line to the data. That's the only way. Oh boy, okay, so things getting complicated here. Uh, Alright, a nightmarish rearrangement later. I came up with this layout. I don't know how much footage it has cut out, but I was on that for a while. So, uh, I didn't change much code. There was a little bit, bit that changed here, but mostly I updated pin numbers. Uh, so anyway, X3 still goes there to this guy. This is the cross-product controller. I tucked away my multiplication helper helper way up here in the corner since it only needs one pin connection. That worked fine. This only needs two pin connections, so these could go all the way on the right. This only needs two, so I was able to tuck those all the way on the right. So this has the connection to the multiplication thing. This thing's x1 is for multiplication. You're, it's still on x3 for you, and it's on x3 for you. 
So yeah, cross product was the one that was having trouble and it's, it's helper was having trouble getting connections to everything. So this connects to the radio transmitter helper. This connects to the multiplication helper. It connects to uh, the lookup helper here and connects to the lookup helpers address line in X2. So then the cross product helper has a connection to this thing's A1 and it's D1 and the 200P14's D0. And of course the actual cross product operator thing. Okay, and I think I've updated all my pin numbers to match. Cool, so. Uh, where do I start in this? Okay, so you need to set the address. Okay, so you move zero to X, actually X2, don't you? So you set up the precondition of that. Move zero to X2. Uh, I need to tell this that I want to read four values, basically. Um, move four to X1. I'll do this a slightly inefficient way. No, I won't. No, I'm doing it the other way. I tell it that I want to read a value and then that I also want to read three more, <laughs> basically. Uh, so then the two values that reads go to the multiplication helper. Yes, yeah, so the high level logic for this. Uh, to the multiplication helper. Uh, this thing's going to have to count to three as it does this. That's actually fine. Is it? It might be. I'm not sure, though. It probably is. It's going to count using this address line. Uh, it needs its ACK register, because after it multiplies the first pair of numbers, it needs to then add... I'm not sure I have enough space to do all this here. That's my worry, that this is going to run out of instructions. Uh, after multiplication, I guess I just add X3. Or really, I move, uh, move X3 ACK. I read two more values, and then I add x3. No, I don't. I sub it. I would have added with the incorrect definition of this, but yeah, so I sub that. So here's y1 times z2 minus z1 times y2. Okay, uh, so that's one component of the result. Then I move ACK x0. Okay, so that's the x component of the crossed uh, product thing. So then I'm going to tech x2 4 9 Wait, what? I didn't count right. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 10, 11, 12 0, 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. What? Why can't I count? I've been playing this game too long. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it'll get there. Take x2, 12. Uh, move a 0 there. This should. This needs to clear that IO line. So this should be move x0, x2. Yeah, okay, so that's that's... The initialization of that. So tech x 212 Yeah, okay, this actually works great. This actually works real nice. This actually works perfectly. Okay, so it definitely fits in here. Uh, 3x1. Okay, so loop. 3x1. Tech x 212 minus jump loop. And you're done, I think. Okay, so slx x3. Move x3 ack. So that's that's a count value, so so that you know to do this four times. So move x two that data to x zero. You might need to get bigger, but that's fine. You have room to grow. Yes, and I could definitely grow you upward and avoid a simple pin that's there if you have to. But I'm going to try four thousand x first if I can. Okay, I'm almost done here. Uh, well, <laughs> gonna have some debugging to do probably. But maybe I've written this bug free. It's not impossible. It's unlikely. Uh, move x0, x2. No, the other way around. Move x2, the address of that, to x0, the address of this. Then, really, you just move 
x1, the data at that address, to x3, the thing that invoked you. Uh huh. Okay, and then uh, check ac0, if not, sub1, uh, and jump loop, which is lop. <laughs> okay, I'll write loop. Uh, loop is not there, by the way, it's here. Is that all? That might be all. Move x3, ac, loop, move x2. That one, x0, yes. Uh, yeah, so just four times, well, number of times that you're told, plus one. Uh, look up the address of what comes in on this line here and send the data back. Yes, okay. I think my program might be done. So, uh, let's step it and see what happens. First of all, can I advance a time unit? Because nothing should happen. I can, except Radio TX transmitted something. That's interesting. Okay, so there's first bug. Radio TX transmitted something. Tech data nine nine nine. Oh, no, oh, here's a problem. Okay, sure. Uh, tech data nine jump wait, wait, sleep one. Okay, you went through a unit without doing anything. Great. You went through another one, great. Okay, so two comes in. This is a dot product. All right, the simple one. You get a two, dad is not negative nine and nine, zero goes to x3, sure. Okay, so I gotta write the vectors. So here comes some vectors, I'm gonna write a six. Move x0, x2. Okay, so that takes like two steps to get from here to here and then from here to here, okay? Uh, move x2, null, skip a thing, great. Take x3, six, it's not. Take x3, seven, it's not. Jump loop. All right, yeah, so we're writing interleaved vectors. This is six, one, negative six. So six goes there, one goes there, negative six goes there. Okay, so at this point, x3 is six. So we're gonna plop that pointer up there. It's not seven, so we're gonna keep going. Okay, so that's x1, x2, and x3. No, it's not, That's <laughs> there is no x3. That's x1, y1, z1. All right, so here comes x2. Not this x2, this x2. Second x com second vector is x component. Goes here. It, it is indeed one. Then we're gonna get a nine, then a negative one. These vectors don't make any sense. They're just random numbers between negative 10 and 10, but that's fine. It doesn't make a difference to the math here. Uh, uh, it was easier to write it that way than to make vectors that actually made sense. If I were doing like a visualization over, and over here, I wonder if there's a Lua API for that. Because some puzzles have visualizations next to the, the data here. That might be a private API, but it would be cool to have like show in 3D like what, what vector is crossing with what vector and like what the dot product is. Because I could totally do that. Be a lot more complicated than this though. Anyway, so we're writing y2 to this, I believe, which is nine or something. No, we're, uh, we just wrote x2. So here's y2, there's your nine. You're not done yet. Here's z2, negative one. Great, you did it. It's not six, so you're not doing that, but you are done there. And I do have the initial set to zero, great, okay. So, uh, dat was two. This is a dot product command that goes out on x1. Uh, over here, okay. It is not one, so therefore I send a zero to the x2 line. Do I? Yes, okay, so that is... All right, so we're asking for a dot product here. That zero value coming in on x2 goes out to x1, which is the address line. Okay. Uh, so that makes sure this right address pointer is here, where it's supposed to be. And yeah, this wants to read something and put it out to the radio. Great. Looking good so far. x0 is the data line. Okay, so the first bit of data, right. So I wrote this in interleaved order, so you can just do the thing. Uh, oh yeah, does my multiply work? <laughs> I don't know if any of this code is right. All right, so you read a six, and then you're gonna multiply it by what comes in on there. So this is basically 0 0.6, because uh, it's fixed point with one decimal digit of precision. Uh, 
So read the next data value over there. 0 0.6 times 0 0.1, which is times one, right, yeah. So I'm gonna shift that to the right and I'm gonna end up with zero because it uh, truncates the value. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna read that once it's done. Okay, so now you do your work. DGT2, there was nothing there. The only time that will ever be, uh-oh, negative numbers. <laughs> Mmm, this will only make sense with positive numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna need some negative number handling there. That's fine, I have some instruction space here. Maybe this can help, maybe this... Ooh. It's fine. I can, like, test for less than zero and mull by negative one if I need to or something. But let's not worry about that until we run into the case where I have a negative number. But yeah, I don't have negative number handling and I will need it. Okay, so mull 10, zero times 10 is still 10. Uh, move ack x zero. So that's talking to this. What's it doing with it? What does this actually do? It adds two numbers together without using one of these registers. Sure. Uh, so then we're going to get another digit that is also zero. So zero plus zero equals zero. All right. So that's the first operand pair of the dot product. So x1 times x0 truncated turned into a zero. All right. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So we added that to... Back. Uh, we're not done, so keep going. Yeah, that seems right. Okay, next. Uh, point 0.1 times point 0.9. Okay, so... Move that there. Right, so this is still zero. We saw how that works. Okay, so the next one, negative six and negative one. Something looks wrong here. I feel like my multiply implementation just doesn't even make sense. Negative six times negative one, or negative point six times negative point one. This is gonna come up with zero. Okay, there's an error in my thinking with my multiply font. Well, two errors. Uh, one is not handling negative numbers. Ah, uh, no. No, okay, so these pairs of numbers all have the same sign, but you're telling me this is supposed to come back with two? Two. Okay, so I have an extra layer of debugging here because I'm wondering if my Lua function for dot product actually makes sense. Am I am I just like shifting to the right too much? Uh-oh. Do I have a big major problem here? I might, because I'm writing out a zero there, and that's not what that expects. Okay, so let's think about this whole dot product situation. Um, if I multiply those two numbers together, yeah, this just is not... Okay, I th think... 
I think I know what I need to do. I just need to multiply one of my incoming numbers by 10 before I multiply the other one by it, right? That sounds maybe right. Okay, so let's look at Lua here. When you do the dot product, x times x divided by 10 plus y times y divided by 10 plus z times z divided by... Yeah, I'm shifting... No, 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 this should come up with the same number because I've implemented pretty much this over in here, right? x times x divided by 10 plus y times y divided by 10 plus z times z divided by 10. Did I interleave correctly? Because yeah, this is coming up with 2. For this vector, point six times point one, or well, no, six six times one divided by ten—that's zero. Negative six times one divided by ten—that's zero. Nine times negative one divided by ten—that's zero. First, why am I getting different answers between this and just doing this manually with this data? And second, why am I coming up with a zero there? Something is definitely wrong, and I'm not quite sure what it is yet. All right, figured out what it was. I kind of had a suspicion. Um, and some manual mathematics confirmed it. I need to back out to here and go back to my Lua code. So this is um, math.random, presumably is always returning a floating point type even if it's quantized to integers when you feed it integers. This is definitely doing floating point division because with truncating integer division, this should actually come back with zero for that set of data. But with floating point, it comes back as 2.1 because three fractions that all would individually be truncated to zero then added together uh, add up to 2, 2.1. 2 uh, so I need to figure out how in Lua to cast those to an integer, I guess. I could probably just like math.floor. That's a simple way. Or can I typecast? Hmm. Oh, check this out. The thing that I said uh, might have happened totally happened. There are two divide operators in Lua, and this one is always floating point. So I went slash slash, huh? So it doesn't matter what math.random was returning, that operator was converting to, to float, huh? Okay, so if I do this, I should just see some lower numbers. All right. Unexpected symbol near slash. Really? Isn't that what this said? Slash slash. Floor division. What? Floor division is a division that rounds the a floor of the division of its operands. Okay, well I guess if I have to, I can just do this then. Let's see, yeah, post floor should be fine, okay. There are probably smarter ways to do this for people who know Lua better than I do, but I've not written a whole lot of it and not in a while. All right, how's that? It compiles. It opens, verification does indeed say zero though, okay. So zero, two, four, zero, negative nine, negative 13. Okay, so there is still some 
dot products that are non-zero, but these numbers are lower now. Okay, so this will make sense. Uh, I think I've verified that my dot product function does the right thing. It doesn't handle negative numbers, but this first cast test case doesn't stress that. So let's go on to one that does. All right, um, well, I know this is outputs a zero, and I know I already stepped through that to see that, so that part's fine. Uh, I guess I might as well just break point here-ish. Yeah, okay, so you've put together a zero, you move it to x2 out here, and then you reset act to zero. This gets written to the radio, and we move on to the next time unit. Okay, great. Well, okay, so let's do a cross products. How about that? So read the vectors, interleave to order. Doesn't matter, because assuming I have my indexes in the right place here, that'll be a pain to debug if I don't, but assuming I do, I mean, I'll just rewrite this table if something goes wrong with that. I'll be able to tell. Uh, okay, so x1 goes out, or one goes out here. X1 is one, so now we wake up X3 instead. All right, so how about you? Uh, your... So your input is stored there. This is now expecting an output. X0 goes to X2, so reset this to zero, great. Move three to X1. So when I wake up X1, it does this operation once, then it does it the number of times additionally that I tell it to. Okay, so that goes into ACK, uh, and then I wanna read from you. So x2, address 2, comes out here and goes into this and sets the right pointer here, right? Yes, great, and moves this on by 1. x1, the data, the negative 1, goes out here. All right, so negative 1 gets fed to the multiplier. What's it going to do with that? Let's see. Okay, right. So it depends. Will the next number also be negative? Uh, right, and you're not. You haven't counted all the way down to zero yet, so you keep counting, keep doing. Uh, address 5, negative 10. Here we go. Negative 1 times negative 10. Well, um, at least this will come out with a value that's... Yeah, so two negative numbers. It's a it's two numbers of different signs that is, I think, going to mess this up with the DGT implementation I have there. Because I assume DGT on a negative number will just give me the positive version of it, but maybe not? Maybe it'll do something else. Wait. Okay, right, yeah, so that's the hundreds digit. Here's the tens digit, that is one. One. Yes. Negative time, ten times negative one. So, negative one times negative zero point one. Comes back with positive zero point one. Yes, okay, I agree with that. Uh, X0, X0, X1, yeah, okay. So X0, so your output is one. That goes back out here to this. Okay, so you get a one, great, looks good. So that's uh, Y1 times Z2. Uh, so then we do it again. Values that get looked up are okay. So right. So hang on. Let me make sure those are the right ones. Y1 times Z2. Um, Y1 times Z2. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So then four. Let's see. Where are you? Uh, Z1. Here three. Yes. Times Y2. Okay, so 0.3 times 1. All right, so that gets a 30, so that comes to 0.3, sure. All right, so I subtract that, and I'm going to end up with a negative 2 there. And... Why is that wrong? This is positive. Hmm. 
Hmm. You came up with positive two. Is that because of the negative number handling here? No. Those Both of those pairs had the same sign, right? Right? Uh, I should just fix this problem. But I think something I didn't understand went wrong there. So two, five, four, three. Two, negative one, times five, three. Oh yeah, no, those did have different, uh, different signs. And that was the problem. Okay, so now, hold on, let's, uh, let's reset this. Let's see very specifically if this is what I think it is. So what do you get? You get a negative one, and you multiply that by, is it three? Uh, negative ten. Oh wait, yeah, that's an index. Okay, well, yeah. No, that should be... Okay, so this is once again... Numbers not adding up to what I think they should be. Also, floor is the incorrect... is not the correct operation here. That's not truncation. Truncation needs to go towards zero. This goes toward negative infinity. Yeah, like it says, flooring, floor division. That's not what I want. No, I need truncation. Oh dear. But now, hold on. But let's look at uh, look at the comparison of these. So we're y1 times z2 minus z1 times y2. y1, negative 1, times z2, negative 10, mm -hmm. uh, should be positive 1. Uh, after the shift, z1 time, minus z1 times y2. z1, 3, times y2, 10. Yeah, that should be negative 2. Why is this positive? Oh boy. So debugging at two different levels here, isn't this fun? y1, that's, that's the 1, times z2, minus z1 times X2! I got a typo in my Lua script there! Ha! Oh, that's funny. Alright. Is that better? Negative two. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's a good one. Okay, so I know the negative two gets written. I need to see a pair with a different sign go through, though. Uh, sure, yeah, so I can I can get to where that is. All right, yeah, so I know the negative two is correct. And I know it does come out correctly as I expect it to. So yeah, I just want to see what happens if this gets a negative number and a positive one separately. So one minus three or whatever gets that. And that goes out there, and that is correct. Okay, cool. I wrote a correct value. Now... Uh, and this did read the correct number of those. That's great. Okay, so this loop works fine. All right, so next up we're doing negative four times what? Negative 10. Okay, so same sign. That'll be fine. Negative one times... something. Hold on, four is coming out. Four is correct. Well, it did it correctly. Uh, 
Uh, negative four. Move x one act. There we go. There's that negative four. Where's the where's the where's the other value come in? Oh, I don't ever see it in here because it just mulls with it directly. So I have to catch it on this line right here. Three goes in. 10. Here we go. Negative 4 times 10. Perfect. Okay, so this is a good example of when you'll get a negative number here in your accumulator. So, when I DGT on that, yeah, I just get a z well, 0 is a 0. There is no negative 0 in Shenzhen IO integers. Oh, I get a negative 4. That's fascinating. Is that correct? I'm not sure. If it's adding them together. What does that mean? I'm doing two G G DGTs and adding... I don't know, let's see what result this gets. Negative four is coming out. Okay, so it's not happy about that. Okay, so um, let's think about what this actually needs to say. What was that? 10 and negative 4, I think. Oh boy. Negative 4. And then 10. Okay. So, what does that mean? So, negative 0.4 times 1 should come back with negative 0.4. Negative 4. That seems right. Maybe I have a typo in this data. That's entirely possible. Okay, so let's do that portion of... Since I know this comes back with a negative 4, let's do that portion of the cross product manually. x1 times y2 minus x2 times y1. I typed that right, right? Uh-huh, looks like it to me. Uh, x1, negative 4 times y2, 10, yeah, minus x2 times y1. x2 is negative 1 times negative 1. Yeah, so that should still be negative 4 there. Uh, let's check this. It might be the, a problem with the floor here x1 times y2 minus x1 times y2. Okay, so I had that typed wrong. It's supposed to be... Wait, what? Are all of these wrong? x2 times y1. I mean, this should feels like it should be that. x2 times y1. So then these others. Okay. So I have more typos in here, maybe. Uh, this is a very easy function to typo. I am not at all surprised that I had some of my, my things mixed up. y1 times z2 minus z1. No, wait. x2 Oh, I typed this funny. y1 times z2 minus z1 times y2. x1 times z2 minus z1 times z2. x1 times y2 minus x2 times y1. So I just put that in a funny order. So I was right with this. Uh, but what makes more sense is to swap these around and swap 
these around just to be in the other order. Y1 times X2. Because I'm always going 1, 2. X1 times Y2 minus Y1 times X2. X1 times Y2. Oh, by the way, I changed... Um, I did a thing in Windows to change my... Uh, I-beam cursor to make it more visible, so hopefully that's actually working. <laughs> uh, you should be able to actually see it in the text editor now, I think. Yeah, I think it's showing up. I hope it is. Uh, if it's not, then I've done it wrong. Anyway, uh... <sighs> Where was I? Uh, y1 times x2. Yes, okay. So I fixed this again. So now reload. And that should be a negative 4. Okay. Okay, so my my Shenzhen IO assembly code was more correct than my Lua code. Uh, all right. So that worked. I don't trust it to work for everything. I think I'm going to have to fix this, but let's see how far it gets. All right, so the first dot product was correct. The first cross product was correct. Second cross, or the second dot product. And did it. Second dot, uh, third dot product, it didn't do it. Okay, so negative 13. So something's wrong right there. I suspect it's to do with negative thingies there. Yeah, you go away. Okay, so what happened here? Do I have mixed signs? This is nine times... Okay, so hang on. Let's just let it write in the interleaved format and then I can just read it down that way. Yeah, so nine times negative nine. What's that going to come back with? Yeah, so all of these are sign mixed. So this is a perfect stress test right here for that particular behavior on this. All right, so let's see what that's going to look like. Overall structure of this program is good. This is uh, basically done. I just have little uh, details to work out. I think this is the last uh, last detail here. So 9 times negative 9 gets negative 81. I agree with that. So the output should be negative 8, and it's probably not going to be. Uh, except it is. Okay, so negative 8, so that one worked. Uh, negative 8, I agree. Plus 4 times negative 7. So point 0.4 times point negative, negative point 0.7. Minus 28, so that should come back with a minus 2 after it shifts it to the right. It did. This looks to me like it's working. I think when you when I get a three-digit number in here, it's going to be wrong, but none of these will make three-digit numbers. That still looks right, so I think I still have something wrong with my Lua? So what number actually comes back here? This is currently negative 10. Oh, it's the floor. It's the floor. It's the floor. I need to truncate instead of flooring. This is coming back with negative 10, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming back with negative 10 because I'm flooring in... No, wait. But that's coming back with a more negative number. Oh, dear. Oh, wait, hang on. But I... Negative 10 when I expected negative 13. Okay, yeah, so I think all three of those are getting floored. Okay, let's do something super gross here. Negate, negate. No, let me figure out how to do this better. This would work, but I hate it. Well, turns out Lua goes way out of its way to make the normal operation of truncating a floating point number to an integer something very familiar to me in a language like C, just inaccessible. Everybody on the internet says use math.floor, but that's incorrect behavior for negative numbers here. So I just made my own little truncation function. If it's negative, then seal. If it's positive, then floor. Just go toward zero. 
and I used it in all these places. And it does appear to, oh, by the way, this operator does exist in some version of Lua, uh, was added at some point. I'm going to guess that the version used here is earlier than where that existed. So that's why that wouldn't compile, maybe. That's my guess. Uh, this game's like four years old now, I think. I uh, don't know when Lua 5.3 was, but anyway. <laughs> Details like those shouldn't matter too much. Anyway, and I do get a negative 10 here, so that uh, should make sense now. Simulate to there, step, we get a negative 10, great. Okay, so how is this? Do I need special handling for this? Some test case, yes, okay, so it does go wrong right there. And I suspect that's because of negative numbers. All right, still have a breakpoint there, continue. Let's check. Uh, so a three digit negative number, I think will throw this off, but I want to see it happen. Uh, that is a cross product. Huh, yeah, let's see, none of these are gonna be three digit negative numbers though. So that's the, oh, hang on. Depends which combination of these is put together. Maybe, maybe. Uh, so it's the Y component. All right, so it won't be until the next loop through here. I can just simulate again. Okay, so you got it correct, negative two, but something goes wrong with the negative one. Okay, so uh, we get the six, and I'm gonna guess the negative four. It's gonna have to be. That's the only thing that makes any sense, right? But that won't give you a three digit number. Six and five. What happened? Hold on, it could be the other side of this. Maybe the eight and the negative four? One and zero, no, that's gonna be the, what? What's going on here? Uh, three came out, okay, so now we're doing what? Seven? Wait, was I looking at the wrong pointer here? No? Seven times eight, 56. Hmm. Zero minus five, no, three minus five, so you get a negative two, sure. Negative two comes out when it wanted a negative one. Okay, this is more, ugh, okay. So getting the rounding behavior to match between these two languages seems like it's being a bit of a problem here. All right, so is this another place where something is being done as floating point in a way that I don't want and that's causing me the trouble? It shouldn't, because, like, I'm truncating everything. Truncate float, truncate float, truncate float, yeah? I, I am truncating everything where I'm doing any math on it. Uh, unless I need to truncate this before I divide by 10, that shouldn't be. All right, let me uh, check these numbers manually and see what's gone wrong this time. All right, looks like this is just yet another typo in my uh, cross product function here. All right, two X's, two Y's, two Z's. Two X's, two Y's, two Z's. That looks like the right number now. All right, so that wasn't a rounding thing. It just didn't even show up until then. All right, so is this good now? Uh, did I have a breakpoint there? I had a breakpoint here, okay. Uh, this can go back to normal speed. Can I like, no, all right, that's fine. Huh, so it saves that slider value. Okay, so I had a breakpoint there. And it did do the correct thing. Okay, so I still feel like this is going to break at some point for three-digit negative numbers, but maybe there just aren't any of those in the test cases? They're not. Okay, well, fine then. All right, so uh, it'll probably be a much better experience to try this puzzle without having to also debug the Lua code at the same time and figure out why the things don't match there. Uh, do I at least get to see... Yeah, here we... Whoa, you animate. Since when? 
I didn't feel like I'd ever seen... That thing blinked, didn't it? I was looking over here, but I saw something move there. <laughs> anyway, all right, so 31 yuan, 1915 power, 64 lines. That's my score with this design. I only tried one design. I could try optimizing this for other things, but I just sort of took the same approach as I am with end game puzzles, post game puzzles. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is apparently on par with the difficulty of like everything in Avalon City. At least that's how much trouble I had with it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with that. It wasn't trivial. It wasn't impossible. I didn't have to change the, uh, the like, overall parameters of the input and output requirements. Just debug some of the, the problems in there. And yeah, so that's what I came up with. All right, well, I'm happy with this. I still feel like this is wrong. It just happened to work for everything that's in the test data. And you know what? That's in the spirit of Shenzhen IO. <laughs> There's so many puzzles that that's the case for. I just feel like I should go through this and like prove that it's going to, oh, but maybe. Okay, can I, uh, I want just, okay, here, let's do this. Maybe I just don't understand. Uh, here, let's do negative one, two, three. Negative one, two, three, negative one. Negative one, two, three. Is this negative two or two? That's negative two, yeah. No, that's definitely wrong. Yeah, okay, so that is definitely a flaw in my implementation that just happens not to catch any of the, uh, <laughs> happens not to be exercised by any of my test data. It's just, it's pure luck that uh, that particular case just works out. Or maybe there's some logic where, like, getting a negative number for both of those just, just works out, but I feel like it's a problem. There's no explicit handling for it. And since I'm adding these to, I don't know. It's possible I'm thinking about it wrong. It's possible my test data just doesn't exercise that. But in any case, I'm happy with this just being as it is like that. That's pretty cool. I have to click on the board to get that to deselect. Clicking out here doesn't deselect it. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Anyway, yeah, so my scores are 31 cost, uh, 1915 power, 64 lines. If you want to try this puzzle for yourself, it's linked in the description. Uh, if you went off and did it at the beginning when I prompted you to, then uh, hi again, I guess. <laughs> Hope this uh, gave you less trouble than it did for me. I'm sure it, I imagine it did because you didn't have to debug the Lua code at the same time. But yeah, okay, so I'm uh, happy with that. I'm gonna have to make a summary video for this because this turned out to be kind of a monster puzzle. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, overall, I'm real happy with uh, this design and how it felt to solve it. That's very good. I kind of wish I could also have experienced solving this without debugging the, the puzzle itself at the same time, but anyway, oh, there's one very important step I have to do right here. Good work creating a specification. Maybe one day you will take my job. Yeah. You will never retire, Jay. I won't allow it. I have been doing this for almost 40 years, so maybe another 40 years I will get tired. <laughs> you look pretty good for your age. Uh, all right, cool. Good stuff. So that just, uh, I didn't have to, uh, hold a button here or anything like I, like I would have to for this. Um, it just did it. Where were you? There. Okay. Well, Hey, I completed an actual puzzle there. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. I'll see you next time for possibly this, I think, unless I decide to go back here at some point I will, but I think probably it's going to be prototyping new ideas.